as you think about like future growth, does the desire to ever open up on a, a mud water shop come to mind? Uh, you know, obviously it's good marketing too. I think like the drink I just made is wonderful. And so, and I know you guys have a whole menu of different, you know, different recipes that go with it. And so it'd be a really interesting way to share that with the market. Do you ever think about a retail strategy, obviously post COVID, but it seems to make sense. Totally. Yeah. I mean, we kind of look at the whole coffee ecosystem, right? Like you have, it's a beverage. It typically comes in a vessel, like a mug. So we're, we're, we're thinking through mugs that maybe have like a frothing mechanism. A lot of times there's like content involved where you got your coffee in the newspaper. We're investing heavily in content. We're, we're building sort of like a, a Red Bull media arm, but for health, wellness, lifestyle, and um, psychedelic research, so like mental health research. Uh, and we will be publishing that starting in Q2. We're going to launch our first like physical. It's actually going to be like an old school style newspaper that we're going to launch. And then, like you said, I think the physical location is a huge part of why coffee is so big. Before Starbucks cafes launched, like coffee was largely like a, a, a blue collar, like drinking in the military. There's Folgers and whatnot. And then it became that third location and that you know, whether people wanted to drink coffee or not, they go and grab a quote unquote cup of coffee with somebody. And that's just like synonymous with going to chat. Mm -hmm. And so I think that there's a huge potential um, to take what we are doing and apply that to a physical space. So, I mean, we, we just had a meeting with the former CEO of, of Starbucks actually, and it was a pretty interesting conversation that my co-founder had with him. And he, he asked the same question and we had the same answer. And but we also were like, but we're not going to have coffee there. Right. And he's like, and he just like, didn't really, he didn't really get it. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I mean, I think having a cafe type space, I don't know if I'd want to call it a cafe even, but like a space right. to go that sort of rethinks how we, how we find energy, productivity, a community, those types of things is something we're really interested in. But also for our D2C business, it's interesting because as an acquisition tool, right? Like you can, the, the best way to try our product for the first time would be like someone like you who know who like has their way of making it's like dude you got to try this like here's how yeah. i make it and you give them like your secret recipe um, but that can also be facilitated like by a trained barista right and then in a cafe environment allowing for people to sign up for you know their automatic dis subscriptions like we have 70,000 subscribers now and and so wow. um, using using that as a place where people can go try it for their first time in an amazing format whether that's hot cold blended and then they can just sign up for their monthly deliveries on the spot is um, something that we and our investors are really excited about it's amazing because it's like completely green opportunity like i'm just thinking out like out loud you can call it the mud room you don't you right you can just differentiate it can be like a almost a place for creatives as well or there's just so much there that the coffee market has kind of positioned themselves in a certain way and that leaves a really interesting opportunity for differentiation yeah, and like cool. the our our brand, it's you know mud slash WTR, and and I think that slash is symbolic for like being able to be malleable across different verticals, and so like we were hmm. hypothetically calling these locations like mud hut, so M U D H U T, hmm. things like that. But yeah, yeah, you're spot on. Like I think that we wouldn't necessarily try to clone the cafe model. It'd probably be cafe plus. Like we would we would probably have. You could order beverages, but there'd be like maybe a members only area where there's meditation classes and maybe even like a nighttime hangout spot where it sands alcohol and we incorporate some different um, elixirs that are conducive for, uh, you know, socializing and whatnot, relieving anxiety. Maybe it's the, the opposite side of the spectrum too. We're, we're about to launch a, a nighttime blend. So the best morning ritual or, or the morning ritual you choose is sort of determined by the night before, right? Like if you don't sleep, um, yeah. a lot of people are like turn into their coffee because they're like, I'm dead tired. If you sleep amazing, like you might not need to rely on a drug for energy. Um, instead, you might look for other things that you're looking for, of course, like focus and whatnot. But in regard to like socializing too, I'm really interested in that space, the alcohol alternative space. So those are definitely both things we're, we're thinking about with like a physical location.